In our final video, we're going to talk about the factors that can influence succession. There are two different types of factors that we need to know. Density independent and density dependent. Those sound very, very similar, but it's actually pretty easy to distinguish between them. Density independent factors are things that do not care about population density. So these tend to be abiotic in nature, although some of them are biotic, particularly if they're human driven. So density independent factors are going to affect the population regardless of how dense the population is. So these are your thing, your natural disasters, soil conditions, deforestation, the amount of physical space that's habitable in an area. None of those things change based off of population density. Pesticides are indiscriminate, and indiscriminate is a good way to describe these factors. So climate, habitat destruction, global warming, and if you look at specific uh, natural disasters, floods, fires, and earthquakes are really good examples. Volcanoes, of course, are another one as well. Contrast this with density dependent factors. These are things that are determined by population density. So competition, the denser the population, the more competition is. Food shortages are probably going to be more acute in areas with greater population density. Predation, symbiosis, uh, stress from interacting with each other as well as just uh, having to find resources constantly. Disease is an absolutely huge density dependent factor and in fact is probably one of the biggest ones because as you get denser populations disease crops up way more frequently and we can still see this in human populations even though we have uh, medicine that is very good at breaking chains of transmission and treating the diseases, they absolutely crop up uh, more often in densely packed areas than uh, <clears throat> uh, dispersed areas. Uh, invasive species depends on the density of the invasive species. Uh, water and resource usage will be faster in denser areas, as well as uh, the usage of breeding and habitat space. Now, this is important to consider because especially natural disasters, but also disease too, can have a big impact on succession. Natural disasters help to maintain an equilibrium between the species. They help to renew an area and allow areas where pioneer communities can move in and start to rebuild it. This helps to reintroduce soil or nutrients into the soil. It helps to increase the community's biodiversity as well by opening up spaces. And in fact, uh, in Canada particularly, we have many species of plants that reproduce based off forest fires. An uh, excellent example of them is Douglas fir. Douglas fir will only open its seeds after a forest fire. They actually stay locked in and the uh, forest fire needs to take place in order for their cones to open up and release their seeds. So that actually gives an opportunity for new offspring to grow as well as new species to move into an area and refresh the area's diversity. And that's important because it helps to control the spread of things like diseases, pests, and parasites. And it makes the entire ecosystem a bit more resilient to massive catastrophic events.